Hey, just checking in to see how are you doing with your New Year's music practicing resolutions. Now, if you're like most of everyone else, some of these resolutions probably have been swept aside because life just got in the way. Well, in this video, I want to help you optimize your practicing so that you can get more done in less time. Pay attention to the last step at the end of this video because it's something that no one else really talks about. All right, let's get to it. Hi, I'm Donna from Donna Schwartz Music, and if you want more tips to bring your playing to that next level and licks to sound like a pro, hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you get notices when new videos are out. Now, in order to optimize your practicing so that you can see and hear results, I've got three tips for you. Let's start with tip number one. Step one, get prepared. The first step is to have everything ready, preferably the night before. So if you use a practice journal, whether it's a physical book or an interactive planner like I have in my Practice Like the Pros course, write out what you're going to work on the next day. You don't want to spend all that time while you have precious practice time sitting there figuring out what to do. So how will you know what to write down? We'll base it off of what needed work from today's practice. So if I'm having a problem with playing through the changes in the last line of There'll Never Be Another You, I'll make sure to add working on chord tone solos to my next practice session. If I'm having a problem with one particular note in the altissimo register, I'll write down that I need to work on exercises around that particular note for around five minutes. Get the idea? Also, to have everything ready, make sure you have all the supplies you need ready to grab and go. So have your metronome on the music stand. If you're using backing tracks, get them ready beforehand so you're not sitting there wasting time trying to find them or searching for files on your hard drive when you could be actually playing instead. Step two. In order to feel like you're actually making progress and improving during your sessions, you're going to want to set goals. But these goals have to be realistic and achievable. You know, there's that acronym SMART that's used when planning goals for anything, actually not just music. The S stands for specific. So is your goal to be the best musician in the world? Well, unfortunately, that's not specific enough. Something specific would be internalizing the melody of a song, but that's still not enough. We need the goal to be measurable, and that's what the next letter stands for, the M. It stands for measurable. So a good way to track this is through tracking how much of the melody you know from one session to the next. In another scenario, using a metronome for learning licks and writing down the tempos that you're able to master that lick um, each time that you play it. That's another scenario. Now the next letter is A, which stands for achievable. Can you achieve this goal? Is it a big goal like mastering the melody and improvising over 12 songs plus having them internalized so you can play them at a jam session in a month? That was a mouthful. <laughs> that may be too much. Break it down into manageable pieces so that each is achievable for you. So maybe one song a week with smaller goals like mastering the melody one day, getting down the changes over the first section next day or next few days, then the next sections the next few days figuring out the connections between the chords so that your solo flows. You get the idea. Whatever's going to work for you, make it into manageable chunks. But as you're planning your goals, the next step can save you a ton of time. So you have to think about, is this goal something that will help you improve many aspects of your playing? In other words, is it R for relevant, the R from smart? So for example, if you have to improvise over, let's say, rock songs for a cover band, right, for an upcoming gig? Is a relevant goal learning bebop licks right now? <laughs> Especially when the style of music doesn't call for that. Hey, bebop licks are great. 
It's great for your technique, but prioritizing your goals, keeping them relevant, will help you see which ones you need right now. Now, when you set a deadline to achieve something, that really puts a fire under your ass to get it done. So the next part of the acronym, the T, the last letter, stands for time bound. So if you have one week to learn a song, trust me, you'll get organized enough to learn it. Now where this step gets really challenging for everybody is when working on improving your technique or tone, there are areas of practice that we need to do every day but it can seem like there's never an end line to playing long tones or scales and arpeggios. And this is where you look at these areas and create deadlines for moving on to either other tone exercises for various goals there too, or other types of technique exercises or moving on to another key for technique exercises or even for tone exercises. You know, goals planned using the SMART system will absolutely help you improve. But there's one more step no one else talks about. It's a step that actually can derail all those SMART goals and your preparation. So step three is no judgment. How many times have you actually said, this sucks, or I suck, out loud, or thought it to yourself? Be honest. <laughs> Listen, putting that negative thought out there, it actually distracts you from accomplishing, accomplishing the goals that you set. And it often leads to spiraling down into more negative thoughts, which is really hard to break out of that negative mindset. I know, I've been there. Now, if you could approach working on each section of your practicing with the idea of being very objective. So for example, you either can or can't play that scale at 100 beats per minute in 16 notes right now. You either can or can't. Instead, thinking which tempo can I play it at and each time build up the speed slowly until I'm getting it more relaxed and I'm getting in good time with a good tone. Just asking yourself simple questions about whether you are achieving something or not and not attaching emotion to your results will help you make tremendous progress. So get prepared, set smart goals, and don't attach emotion or judgment to the results and you're gonna be able to optimize your music practice. Now I get more detailed into this, into the three areas of what you should be practicing in, as well as how to practice to get results in my Practice Like the Pros course. I'll put the link with more info in the description below. I also cover more quick power practice tips, as I call them, on my Patreon site, along with dozens of other lessons on learning jazz, blues, rock, funk licks. Now, if you're loving the content on my YouTube channel, you're gonna love the extra content on my Patreon site. And for as little as $3 a month, you get access to all those extra videos I talked about, plus searchable transcripts for a number of my YouTube videos. There's also PDFs and backing tracks for many of the licks that I teach and more. Plus. To be honest with you, you're helping me out big time with creating more videos for you on my YouTube channel. So head on over to patreon.com slash Donna Schwartz Music and I really, really, truly appreciate your support. Now if this video helped you, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and tap the notification bell so you can catch my next video to help you bring your playing to that next level. Hey, on that note, thanks for joining me. Take care. Have a great day.